Hey, what's up? Rowan and Jack here with a special two-part series on instructionals. If you've missed part one over on Jack's channel, he broke down the setup, the jump cut, and the post jump cut, how to execute it in a game. Today, we're talking about the flick throw and go. Jack, I know you work the backhand throw and go quite a bit. Do you do it on the flick side as well? I was going to say, I don't think I've ever done a flick throw and go, even in practice. I'm excited to, to learn how to do it. Well, we noticed in his breakdown of the truck offense, which was spot on, we'll link that in the description, you talked about kind of our quick movement. And one thing I've been working on in the last couple of seasons is the forehand throw and go. A lot of teams are forcing flick, which gives you the opportunity to kind of, um, you know, you, you can either try to lefty, but it's all forehand throw and go. So a few things that I've learned that have really helped, I just wanted to kind of share, see if uh, we wanted to try them out here. But uh, the first thing, let's get a couple of just normal throws here. If you take a couple steps back, um, trying to add it to your game. It's actually not the flick. So I never like throw a flick and start running. It's all wrist and middle finger. So my flick throw, my normal flick looks like this, boom. But the flick throw and go just kind of looks like that. I just spin it outside in, which gives you a room for error if you miss it. But yeah, it's essentially just that and go. The reason we do that is because trying to accelerate, if you do this whole flick mechanic, the timing's off and your body just wants to pull your elbow across. So early in my career, I threw a lot of like bladey turnovers trying to learn this until I realized the flick throw and go, if I'm looking downfield, it's just that little spin and go. So it's all on the wrist there. Um, and then, yeah, the most important part for me is, have you ever done single leg throwing? A little bit. A little bit? A little bit. It almost all comes off the right leg. So um, a lot of times I'm even getting the swing and I'm just keeping that right foot on the ground and going. I wonder if there's any film out there, but yeah. So if you want to practice it, it's just like right leg down, outside in with a, no arm. The more arm you're putting in, the more chances the disc has to turn over. Yeah, it's, that's literally the motion and then you just take off off the right foot. So catch the swing, drop down low, get you uh, that shin angle that you talked about in the jump cut. And then I'm here out the gate throwing that throw and go. So, yeah. so we'll like see. I said, I, I've, done the, I've done a lot of the, the backhand give and go, throw and go, but what's the, what do you think is the biggest advantage to the flick instead of the backhand? I think just the fact that the force flick is there a lot. Right. I think a lot of your backhand thrown goes whether it's forced backhand but also it's a lot of dribbling like when you're moving out the gate and the mark is kind of frazzled but the flick thrown go is great for when that mark gets set on that flick side that gives you an, an yard of separation off the gate so if you can keep that you know you don't even have to be faster than your matchup you have right. to be the same speed and I'm not faster than many people anymore but since I have that yard of separation to start I can keep it so yeah, for me, it's just all about getting that force flick mark out of position and you know, the versatility, do you? Yeah, like, uh, so with the, like I said, I've done the, the backhand give go, which a lot makes a lot of sense for me. Just, I'm used to that left foot being the pivot foot. Would you say that- Even on that, a force flick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, sure. yeah, even on the force flick, I go, I go like this and keep this as my pivot and I kind of get away from the mark like this. But it sounds like what you're saying is with the flick give and go, it's almost like you're switching pivot foots and you're, using your right leg as your pivot foot so that you can push off with your right foot rather than have that left. You said all the weights in your right foot there? Absolutely. And if it's like, if I'm getting it in motion, sometimes I will set my right foot as a pivot foot. But if I'm stand still like that, yeah, then I'm going down here, releasing, and there's like 1% of weight in that toe. So it's not like yeah. a, a total travel. Yeah, totally. So yeah, I think just the difference is for me, instead of the barbecue, I don't know, I've just had a little bit more faith in like lobbing this outside in. Yeah. But yeah, there, I'm mean, sure it's good to practice both ways, um, just like that barbecue backhand and go versus the flick throw and go. It just happens to be my preferred I'm method. Whip, I'm gonna whip that one out in our first, uh, yeah. first game. Which, which is great because it took me two years 
until I stop turning it over. So you're in that two year uh, we'll turnover spot. But yeah, I think it's just an option. I think that both are good options, but the flick throw and go is something that's helped my game enormously over the last two years. So yeah. you should try it this year. Yeah, and well, if you're feels, watching, go for it. It also feels like, you know, with the mark right there, the backhand's a little bit hard to get away from the mark with the flick there. True, that flick is there. a big thing. Yeah, you're so not, yeah. as in the way. The flick I can't block, but with the backhand, I've been, I've been blocking a couple times using that move looking right there so it sticks their hands out but with the flick kind of yeah no that is a good point too that i didn't think about is yeah the flick release is here versus like the barbecue is this right so yeah it, it just gives me a lot more comfort yeah. um awesome. that is the big i'm glad you brought that up that's the, that's the last big point yeah. but anyway go out there try the flick throw and go see how it feels again it's not a full flick and run it's a one motion move uh, if you like this, check out part one on Jack's channel where he breaks down the jump cut in detail. And we're looking forward to linking up more to bring you some more great content. Peace.